Hey, this is Wes. Did you know that you can create your own Substance Painter project templates? You know, when you create a new project, uh, it can be a lot to do. You have your texture set settings, maybe display and shader settings, possibly some baking settings. It's a lot to set up. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can create your own custom project template, which is going to get you into your project faster and you texturing much more quickly. Let's take a look. Here you can see the parameters that are saved in a template. You have texture set settings, display settings, baking settings, shader resources, and the environment map file. Templates are saved as a .spt file, and they are saved inside the assets folder, and this can be shared across teams. Okay, so let's just jump in and create a template. So starting off, I'm gonna jump over to my texture set settings, and here I have my default channels. Uh, a good option would be, you know, depending on your project, maybe there's some specific channels that you're always gonna be working with. Well, you can click the plus button and I can add those. So for example, let's say that I wanted to add scattering and scattering color. So I have those channels now. Uh, scrolling down, another option could be, well, I have my height to normal method is set to smooth so bell. And that's great, but it kind of smooths out the details. And I'm going to be using some of the hard surface normal maps to create some paneling and cut lines. So in that case, it's really good to maybe switch this to sharp. So again, I make sure all the edges are nice, clean, and well, sharp. So looking at some other options, uh, we could jump over to, let's say, our display settings. And just looking at the environment, we probably are going to want to change the environment map. So in my case, I'm going to use this glazed patio. Here I could set some other things like uh, the environment rotation so that it's always set up, or I could set something like the environment opacity exposure, again, depending on the map. Another really good option is this environment alignment. So if I'm kind of rotating and working underneath the model, it can show dark and hard to see what I'm doing. So what I can do here is just make sure that I set this to camera alignment. And now the environment is going to be aligned to the camera. So even if I rotate around the back or the front, it doesn't matter. The environment is rotating along with the camera. Uh, and this means I don't have to constantly be changing by my environment rotation. This is a setting that I change like every single project. So again, creating your own template uh, is really gonna help save some time there. Another option, if we look at it here, is the focal length. So in this case here, uh, I like to keep this at say 35. So we'll set that to 35, and that's the focal length I wanna work with every time. I am going to make sure that I activate uh, temporal anti-aliasing. It just makes the viewport look nice and smooth. Here you can see that I've got these kind of jagged edges here. That's terrible. I don't wanna see that while I'm working and painting. So I turn on my temporal anti-aliasing, works really well. Now, something else that I may want to work with is going to definitely probably be the bake mesh map. So if I enable this, any of the settings that I set up here are also going to be saved in that template. So for example, let's say that the particular project that I'm working on, I'm never going to be baking a normal map. So I, maybe I just turn that off and I'm always going to be working with world space, my ID. So let's say for my ID, I would make sure that that's set to vertex color, ambient occlusion. This is something I usually do with my bakes anyways, is make sure the secondary rays is just, I just turn them all the way up to 256. And on my curvature, I have this generate from normal map, but here I'm going to generate that from mesh. And then again, make sure that my secondary rays are set to 256. I may also want to make sure that I'm baking a position map. These, this one here is default, but again, just making sure that it's right. I'm baking all axis in my v, uh, B sphere. But for the normalization here, you could set this to full scene, which is going to bake the position for, again, the full scene. Or there's an option to do this per material. So that means it's going to bake this position per texture set. So it, depending on the project, uh, you'll get a different position map for every single material in your scene. And there can be cases where you need that. And for a particular project, you know it's set up that way, then here's a good option to set that to per material. But, you know, most of the time you're going to want full scene. And be again, because I'm using that scattering color, I definitely want a thickness map. And my secondary rays, they are set here pretty high, but if I need to change anything, I can do so. Maybe I also want to enable my bent normals in this particular case. So here I have just, you know, some of my texture set settings set up. And underneath the common settings, we have the output size. Maybe I want to make sure that all my maps are baked at 4K. And then here you have your 
max frontal and rear distance. Now this would probably change depending on the types of meshes you're using, the difference between your high and low mesh. Uh, here we're not baking any normal map. So in that case, it really doesn't matter. But if you were baking a normal map, you can see there's not settings, but what really matters in that particular case is going to be that max frontal and rear distance. So as I mentioned, we now have set up the texture set settings. We have uh, our display settings. And you know what? We forgot something super important, and that's going to be my shader settings. Of course, I need to make sure I set this up. And the most important setting of all is going to be this setting here for specular quality. The quality setting is set by the number of samples per pixel. This really affects how your roughness map appears in the painter viewport. With low samples, the shader is sampling a smaller range of the grayscale values in the roughness map, and this results in a much rougher look in the viewport than the map is actually going to produce in another 3D renderer. Now, checking out some of these other settings, you can see my bent normal is enabled because I do have that as one of the bakers I want to work with. I have my subsurface scattering enabled. Again, that is one of the bakes that I'm using. I may want to enable my absorption. Here you have your displacement and tessellation. If that's something that you're gonna be using very often, you may know the exact displacement scale you're gonna use. So for example, if I'm like, well, for every mesh type I'm using for my particular project, I need 0.25, that's gonna work for me. And then you have your tessellation uh, subdivision count that you're gonna use. And it's important to know that a scale of one corresponds to the maximum size based on the bounding box of the mesh. So again, you have all of this set up for you and you don't have to keep going in and tweaking these settings for every single project that you create. So now once everything is set up, what you can do is you just simply come over here to file and you choose more save options and then you just save this as a template. Now, as you can see, this is going to be exporting to the default Substance Painter Assets Library. And in the Templates folder, it's going to save that .spt file. And again, that file can be transferred to different machines or saved across uh, multiple team members when you're all sharing and working on the same project together. So with my template saved, the next time I create a new project, I can simply choose that template and I'm set to go. And that's how you use templates in Substance Painter. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.